makes people way more inclined to mulligan sevens and way more inclined to keep six. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically like keeping seven. Canopy Vista to start things off here in the semifinals. With one, it's... Eh, I get to scry, and the other, it's a different, but still the same. Eh, I get to scry. Here's a despise. Take a look here at Majors' hand. Two copies of Hangerback Walker and Nissa, and a hidden Dragon Slayer to go along with the forest. Not the most exciting six card hand here, but definitely serviceable for the matchup. Gonna keep it every time. Yeah. Especially with a scry. Yeah. I can't wait to actually play with the new Mulligan Rogues. I've never done it before. It just seems awesome. There goes Hangerback Walker. Oh, there's Hangerback Walker. Major's right, no, he's going to draw yeah. from the scry, so not going to give away any information there. One counter on the powerful artifact creature. A flood of strand here for Jeff. And we head back over to Michael. We'll take a draw step. Picked up a copy of Den Protector for the turn. A lot of emphasis on exiling here in, in Kruchka's list here. Horribly awry. Complete disregard, utter end. We've seen that a lot this weekend, though, right? You yes. Know, just exiling has proven to be very powerful with cards like Den Protector, Green Warden of Marasa, Delve, obviously. Very interested in exiling. Let's see if Nissa's going to resolve. It is. See, Major's already shortcut it and grabbed the forest out of his deck. Kruchkow. Going to get an island from his flooded strand. Over to Jeff we go. There's a prey stream. Back Majors' way. Valor stands the draw. That could be helpful here. As you mentioned, a lot of exiling effects. Yeah. Jess Nissa. Hanging back with the hanger back walker. Majors will play that forest that he searched up. Now he's just going to pass the turn back. Looks like a swamp to draw here for Krushkow. He'll play an island. Hangback Walker going to attempt to move up. That'll work. Over to Majors. A fun game of balancing the Hangerback Walker. How high do you go? I think it's mostly just about mana. I mean, once you get to a certain point, you're just attacking. But early on, if, if Majors feels like he's well served to tap out for something, he's just going to go ahead and do that. There's a morph. Although this is interesting. This is a spot where he could have chosen to hang back with his one mana and grow and elected to attack instead. Mm -hmm. But he got the damage in. Yep. Because then other end took care of the problem. There's a swamp there for Krushka. No Dragon Lord Oge tied to play. So now we just head back Majors' way. Windswept Heat, the draw. Here come the beatdowns. And here's Foutling Invocation. Is there a dragon to reveal? It appears the answer is no. And I think Krushka also would Slumgar Scorn in hand, which is going to be hard to use profitably. Mm -hmm. Well, you got a hidden Dragon Slayer. And now here's Hanger Back Walker for two. Major's doing a nice job of playing around Slumgar Scorn. Yeah, and, and when your opponent doesn't reveal a dragon in that spot, you know, uh, you know you're playing around Force Spike and not Counter Spell if you choose to do so. Blue to Delta the land there for Jeff. Major's on the upkeep is going to sacrifice his Windswept Heath. Canopy Vista is the land he will select. An issue with Esper Dragons and, and, and kind of blue decks in general, uh, since the rotation 
uh, Sphinx's revelation is you don't have a card that just hammers your opponent when they give you a little bit of breathing space. These type of decks get hands that are just a lot of removal and counter spells that may or may not work. And if your opponent's clocking you, you can just get caught with maybe a little bit too much mana or not the right answers and get beaten down by a pretty anemic squad, which is what we're seeing majors do right now. There's a morph. Could be Den Protector, Death Miss Raptor. And I, I like Majors making an effort here to get lethal onto the table. Me too. Uh, you know, he, he knocks him down to one. Yeah, Jeff Strong not coming together <laughs> there at all. Okay. You, can, you can even see him shake his head and be a little bit of frustration. I mean, we, he played, what, seven lands that game and just didn't do anything. No dragon showed up to the party. Falting Invocation didn't reveal a dragon. Sloan Car Scorn, he could never cast. He did nothing that game. That's why Majors is up one. Couple of removal spells, and that's that's not going to go against anyone. Yeah, and the, 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 the tough part here, excuse me, as Michael Majors does win, does win game number one here over Jeff Krushkow, Greenwald Megamorph up a game over Esper Dragons. The tough part here for Jeff is that things get really good for Michael after sideboard. Exactly. I think it was really important for, for Jeff to get game one because of Evolutionary Leap. You go to the sideboard here for Arash and Clerics, three copies of Jay's Fringe Prodigy, a Disdainful Stroke, a Dispel, Dragon Lord's Prerogative, Foul Tongue Invocation, Language, Negate. Obnixilis reignited orbs of warding. I think you can pretty safely bring in Obnixilis here, the extra copy of Languish. Uh, Foul Tongue Invocation is medium, could come in. The, the problem is none of this addresses the, the problem of Evolutionary Leap. I think Jace Friend's Prodigy is a fine card to bring in as well. Majors is not killing creatures very efficiently, so uh, it can be powerful here. He may even have to consider bringing in the gate to give himself a cheap answer to Evolutionary Leap. Also, counters Gideon, which is a, a solid threat against Esper Dragons. On the other side of things here, you've got for Majors, three Russian Clerics, three Evolutionary Leap, a Mastery of the Unseen, Radiant Purge, two Silk Wrap, two Tragic Air against a Valor Stance, and two copies of Whispered Elemental. I love, love, love his options in matchups like this. Yeah, we, we've seen this, this package of cards come in with Evolutionary Leap, the Mastery of the Unseen, and two copies of Whisperwood Elemental. That sets him out really nicely to battle against spot removal spells and sweepers. Uh, beyond that, there's uh, arguments, I, I suppose, for Radiant Purge and Valor Stance being an answer to an attacking Dragon Lord of I would I doubt that Majors is going to go to something that extreme. He can even just leave in a couple copies of Hidden Dragons Slayer as a hedge against that scenario, not really bringing any dedicated answers. Well, there are the options there for both players. Game number two going to be underway here in just a moment. Of course, we have updates for you guys in our backup match, which we're not sure if we're going to have time to get to, but if the games go like this, we'll have plenty of time, as the first one was about seven minutes long between Brian DeMars and Adam Werner. We'll certainly let you guys know, but in the meantime, we're talking about SCG Game Night. We're talking about the popular promotion here with Star City Games, and it means we're talking about the Hippo. Absolutely. Your store can get signed up over at starcitygames.com slash game night. Every month we send out a new kit with new pins and tokens for players to play for. You can run game night however you want, sanctioned, unsanctioned, any format. Just get players in your store for some fun and friendly magic. This is the October kit that you're playing for now, coming out of the pipeline soon in November, the Otters. And then if you want to get signed up for December, which is the Reindeer, again, head over to starcitygames.com slash game night or contact your Star City Games in-store play representative. Game number two about to be underway here between Michael Majors and Jeff Kruchkow. For Majors, as far as his accomplishments on the Open Series are concerned, five open top eights with one win. His win came last year at our Season 1 Invitational. He won the Legacy Open on the third day. And boy, we could actually say it was on the fourth day. <laughs> Ran yes. all the way into the, oh, yeah. the wee hours. Him and Philip Braverman went deep into the night at the Charlotte Convention Center. I recall that because I, I called the semifinals, and then, you know, you got the one round left. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to go down to the bar down the street, and I'm going to wait for them to get out, and then we'll, we'll hang out, you know, we'll, we'll commiserate, grab a drink or whatever. And they kicked me out of the bar <laughs> before, <laughs> before you guys were done. Osif and I were there for a long time that yep. night. Yep. Uh, but Michael Majors won, won a heck of a match there against Philip Braverman. That was actually the moment, because I had known Michael very well. I had you know, heard his reputation pretty good, up-and-coming player from Atlanta. But after watching him win that match with Jessica Delvo over Braverman playing Miracles, that's, that's when you kind of know. Mm -hmm. You know, there are moments for everybody when you watch them play where you kind of know. You know, they, they definitely get what's going on. Uh, and Majors displayed some real skill in the game of Magic then to win that match, take that trophy home with them. And it's been, uh, it's, 
been an uptick ever since. Yeah, you know, I, I covered an open match in Atlanta in Legacy where he was the first person I saw who beat Tom Ross playing Infect kind of straight up. Like, Tom, Tom had fine draws of Lance and Spells, and Majors just kind of found a way to win. Yeah. Pretty rare for most people. At the time, yeah. No one was touching Tom. Yeah. One of the first years where Majors will start this game for Krushkow. He's on the play, of course. That's why he's got a Jace. And you mentioned that you like Jace as an option coming in from the sideboard. Now you too, because it's hard for Majors to kill. It's a game plan alongside, you know, his, his removal spells and his sweepers. And Majors does not kill this card very easily unless he's leaving in Dromoka's command. And that seems impossible to justify. Yeah. Dromoka's command is so bad outside of situations like this. One of the first three is at level one. So it was able to attack for three. Now we're going to head back Majors' way. Coming across yet again. Krushkow looks like he's going to take this damage, perhaps. And he will, down to 14. Majors will sacrifice that wooded foothills. I think we'll have a canopy feast on the way. The question is, what's the follow-up play? He's got a Deathmiss Raptor at the ready. How about a Morph? Which, I guess, could be a Deathmiss Raptor. Yep. Yep. Crux of Fate going to be discarded. Horribly awry. Got him. Sort of. <laughs> well, I think the goal there for Majors putting, putting Deathmiss Raptor face down there was so much of Khrushchev's removal exiles that maybe he can get Jeff to do something else. Sure. If he plays the Deathmiss Raptor face up, it's just, it's so likely to die and be exiled. Putting it down as a morph at least gives him some hope Khrushchev thinks it's something else. He didn't buy it. Khrushchev hey, was going to counter whatever showed up. Yep. Now, what is noticeable here, however, that discarding of Crux's Fade. Feeling as though he doesn't need that right now, but I suppose you can just rebuy it later if Chase does flip. Still a lot of information to give away. Yeah. Here comes Warren again. Grush guy going to fall down at 10. Majors does have Gideon in hand. Looks like he's going to go with Nissa, though. A Jace activation. Dragon Lodoge tied the draw. Notable discarding Slumgar. Well, I mean, Kruchkow could just be on the hunt for land drops right now. Yeah. His whole hand might be top heavy. Jeff will draw again. He's activating Jace right away. He found a land, and his Jace is going to flip. He might have to discard a card like Ugin now, however. Looks like he's going to discard complete disregard. Jace will flip into the Telepath Unbound. Start on five counters. We'll see how he wants to use it. There's Flooded Strand. We could see Languish here this turn. Looks like we're going to. So away go the creatures, but now the door is wide open for Gideon. Well, this is still going to be a tough spot for Majors to get out of because this Jace is unlikely to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Jace is very good at, at suppressing Gideon tokens, and there's multiple sweepers and spot removal spells in Kruchka's graveyard to flash back. Dragonlord Ojatai is in hand, ready to go. Not an easy spot to get out of. Majors going to sacrifice a windswept teeth. He'll search up a basic forest. In the meantime, Kruchka is going to sacrifice his flooded strand. Go get himself a sunken hollow. There is Gideon. Right, there's an ally. And we're going to head back Kruchka's way. We've just been informed that Brian DeMars is up a game currently with his Atarka Red deck. I suppose the upshot here is, is Majors can simply start plussing Gideon and trying to attack. That's the thing I like. Kruchka is not too well suited to handle that line of attack right now. Creature's indestructible? Yeah. yeah. 
This is why Gideon is a pretty scary card. May just wants to get a look, see what's hanging out, hanging out down there. Major's draw for the turn was a copy of Whispered Elemental, by the way. Uh, he could even try to ignore Chase altogether and just kind of go wide on this game. Yes, Kruchkow gets a flashback, a sweeper. You still have your Gideon. And Kruchkow's hand might just not be lined up to handle this card. Kruchkow going to fall down to four, it appears. Now the question is, what does Majors want to do this turn? He's going to go with Whisperwood Elemental. And, and I, I like this play from Matrix. It's still just two lines of attack. Mm -hmm. You don't care that much about a sweeper because it means that Kruchkow probably has a chump block with Dragonlord Ojatai next turn. Not a bad spot to be in. Matrix has built himself a pretty nice position here this game. But Jeff has quite a few options here with Jace. And the first might involve Crux of Fate. Looks like it does. Major sacrifice that. What was the morph? Den Protector. Ooh. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. And the tough thing here for Michael yep. is that he doesn't get to manifest anything because of the text on Whisperwood Elemental. So Jeff did a nice job there. For Michael, he's got a hangerback walker. That'll be for three. Pass the turn back. But now it looks like Dragon Lodge might be able to start taking over here. That in combination with Jace, pretty tough card to beat. What are we flashing back here, if anything? Yeah, okay. completely disregard for an exiling yeah. effect. Yeah. Kiss that goodbye. Ojitai, feel free. In for five. Matrix falls to ten. Krishkai to take a look at the top three. And I think that's land number eight to pair with the Ugin in hand. And now, tough to see Majors escaping this. Gideon the draw. Ally on the way. And this is a demonstration, unlike the last game, of how Esper Dragons can flex its muscles sometimes. Yeah, and it involves, you know, getting one of its threats into play and uh, shortening the timeline of the game, uh, especially against majors who can hang around in later games. Another copy of Horribly Awry. And it might be time to drop down old Ugin. Yeah, I think so. Hard to pass that up, right? It's, uh, looks good enough to me. Yeah. It'll go from seven to four. Take care of Gideon. Here comes Dragon Lord Ojitai. Take a look at three more cards. Majors will get one more draw step here, even if he, if he even wants to take it. Yeah, that's a Nissa. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a redraw, so sure. Yeah, I guess he can, he can Nissa and flip and draw a hidden Dragon Slayer. Valor Stance. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, there's some cards in the deck, I guess, that remove. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's either strike your shoulders. It's like, I guess it's not 0%. Yep. Let's see where this goes. I'm pretty dead, but whatever. <laughs> oh, another Nissa. Uh, is that a, that's not a redraw, no. No, no, that one, <laughs> uh, that one's, that one is not a redraw. All right, now he's going to pick it up. So, Jeffrey Kruzkow is going to win game number two here against Michael Majors. That's for Dragons, Green and Megamorph. Getting ready here for game number three. Get a good look at these sideboards here again for both players. Didn't see Evolutionary Leap that game for Michael, but I have to imagine it's in the deck. I have to imagine so too. Although the, the angle of attack that uh, Kruchkow took there would have been a reasonable game plan 
against Evolutionary Elite, which is just keep Majors off balance with a removal spell long enough to get Dragon Lord to tie into play, back that up with some timely sweepers, and bridge the gap to a big finisher like Ugin. Well, Majors will be on the play here, which is a, a pretty big difference, I think. Yes, in the matchup. Uh, definitely. I mean, a, a lot of uh, Kruchkov's removal, uh, complete disregard comes to mind as one that's really good when Kruchkov's going first and a lot worse going second. A lot of mana for that effect. Utter end, much the same deal. Yeah. Utter end plays such a big role in the matchup, though. I think it does a really nice job against a lot of Majors' stuff. I think the biggest problem for Majors on, uh, in the post-board games here is Jace Friend's Prodigy. I mean, that card did... A lot of work there, flashback, multiple sweepers, and allowed Jeff to make his land drops there while he's floundering a little bit. And uh, Michael doesn't have a lot of good answers to that card. And does he consider bringing in some of his pretty bad in the matchup, but good against Jace type of cards? You know, you could bring in Dramoka's Command. You could even bring in something like Silk Wrap. That seems far too narrow to bring in. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jace, to me, was the defining feature of that game from, from Kruchkow's side of the table. And, and Major has to know he's vulnerable to it. Well, again, Majors will be on the play here. Those are the options there for both players. In the meantime, we will talk about the Star City Games newsletter. It is your source for Magic the Gathering news. And best of all, you can sign up for free. Yeah, all of the best content from Star City Games, both on the Open Series with the summary of the last Open Series event, plus a selected match of the week for you to view, exclusive deck lists and advice from some of your favorite premium columnists, and an exclusive Cardboard Crack comic. Best of all, as Hedrick mentioned, sign up is free right now at starcitygames.com slash newsletter. Breaking out the F word late this evening. Evening. Free. Free. Who doesn't love free? Come free. on. Come on. Michael Majors did, uh, did provide some content for that. Some specialized content there mm -hmm. for a month uh, in which he was raving about Jace, which he had been doing since it got spoiled as being the best card for Magic Origins. He was ahead of the curve on that one. Now he might lose to it. And made the top eight of the uh, modern open in Cincinnati mm -hmm. with Jace in his Grixis deck and no copies of Cryptic Command. So yep. put his money where his mouth was, too. He was a believer from the start. He nailed it, and all he did was brew Jace decks for a month. There are a lot of different ways you can go with that card. But now he's on Green White Megamorph. And his deck has looked very, very good here this weekend. Interesting thing about the deck, too. Not really particularly flashy. Nope. You know, there's nothing, a little tech here, a little spice there. It's like, not just a bunch of good value it creatures. It is very Kibler-y. It really is. <laughs> it's very kibler -y. Some good creatures, some good removal spells, good mana. Let's go. Can you play offense if the game calls for it? Sure. Defense? Sure. Both at, you know, like B minus to B plus rates. Yep. Can you kill opposing permanents of various sorts? Yes. It's the same recipe. Same as it's, all, as it's Same always, as has it's always been. been. I think Jeff might be considering a mulligan here. And contrary to your prediction, we're about to start game three here, 23 minutes in. It's I been expected, fast. I expected a lengthy one. I did. But Jeff I, also didn't do anything game one. I think Esper Dragons gets a bad name because it has the word Esper in it. It's not that slow of a control deck. No, it it's really the, not. It turns the quarter pretty fast. And even as far as a control deck is concerned, it's got some light control elements. I really feel like it's more of a mid-range deck, honestly. Yeah, the number of counter spells in the main deck here, I'm counting four. Yeah. Sorry, eight. Excuse me, Slumgar's Corn. So okay. eight. This isn't, you know, Revelation Esper. Anything but that, really. Both players start off with some fetch lands to get game number three of our semifinals underway. I appreciate the desire for shortcutting too. Oh, you're a fan. I am. I'll be sure to radio down them. Make sure they pile shuffle yeah. a little more. For you. For you. What a foothills here for Michael. Slow start here. Jeff will sacrifice Pluto Delta. He'll go get a sunken hollow. Over to Kruchka we go for turn number two. It's an island. Sit back. Majors, gonna sacrifice the foothills. 
perhaps basic forest. Yep. It's a lot of shuffling. <laughs> throwing that out, throwing that out there. <laughs> I like shuffling. I like it. It's entertaining television. There's Canopy Vista. And now Death Miss Raptor. That'll resolve. Oh, to Krushka we go. A flooded strand. A oh, Jace. Right on time. Yeah. <laughs> Over to Majors. Very good opening here for Majors to resolve Gideon. It really is. Deathmiss Raptor is going to put Jeff down to 16. Here's Gideon allies coming with it. Jeff will sacrifice that flooded strand. We might have a prairie stream on the way here. But Jeff's in a little bit of trouble now. Yeah, again, it, it, his deck does not get non-creature permanents off the table that easily. We're, we're looking at Ugin, which is a ways away. Michael does have a Dramokus man in his hand. Looks like he may have boarded that back in because Jace was very good last Wouldn't game. Wouldn't surprise me if that's a play draw sort of thing. Sure. I mean, on the, on the draw, do you have a creature in play and you don't get blown out by a removal spell often enough to warrant it? Probably not on the play. It's not too hard to engineer the situation. There's an island there for Krushka. He'll pass the turn back over to Majors. Majors looking to draw. Wooded foothills. Gideon going up. Getting on in. Utter end. Majors has quite a few options in his hand right now. Yeah. And Majors here made an effort to, you know, if Krushka has nothing going on, great, you hit for a bunch. If he happens to have utter end, now you have a window to Dramoka's command. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a very interesting turn because Majors has another Gideon, he has Dramoka's Command, and he has Fifth Land plus Whisperer Elemental. All of those are options right now. Mm -hmm. And what path he takes may be what decides this game. And you know, with, with the Death Mist Raptor in play, there is, that makes the Whisperwood Elemental a little bit more attractive because you have some protection against the Sweeper, and Kruchkot doesn't even have double black right now. So... Uh, I can imagine just saying, I'm, I'm going to go for it here. Looks like Major's taking a slightly more conservative approach and just taking this opportunity to get Jace off the table. Mm -hmm. Gun discard Ugin. And Jace going to bite the dust now. So after the dust clears, more damage dealt. Kruz got down to nine. Major's still with a pretty good board intact. And Jeff looking to catch up. That's a swamp. This is Languish. It's going to clear it all away. We'll head back Majors' way. He'll sacrifice that wooded foothills. Get see. himself a canopy vista. Kruchkow with a copy of Dragon Lord Ojasai in hand. This is, this is the right mixture of stuff he's looking for. Mm -hmm. Wingmate Rock the draw. Does Majors go to Gideon? Or does he go to Whisperwood? I don't know. Whisperwood is quite a bit more pressure. Right? Oh, he's going to go to Gideon. Okay. Make an ally. Kick it back. There's Sunken Hollow. Here's Dragonlord Ochtai. Back over to Majors we go. And this was sort of the spot we saw last time here where now Majors is very vulnerable to Crux of Fate plus Dragonlord Ojatai attacking Gideon. Yeah. And with his hand being nothing but five mana creatures, Majors may not have a choice but to just dump out the best thing and hope that there's no sweeper. I like, I like actually get in, get in. Yeah. Because, you know, that's kind of a freebie. And then I actually kind of like Wingmate Rock. Sure, I, I guess in the scenario where you get hit by a Sweeper next turn and your Gideon dies to an Ojatai attack, you'd much rather untap and cast Whisperwood Elemental than untap and cast Wingmate Rock. 
Now, what's really interesting here is Majors also has Valor Stance in hand, but he does not have seven mana, so he can't play a five drop and leave Valor Stance up, which would be perfect, of course. And now Michael wants to get a better idea of, all right, what's in the graveyard? What do I have to try to play around? And Jeff is going to sit here patiently with his fantastic Dragon Lord and make Michael try to figure out what to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I suppose Majors can just attack and say go, but you're vulnerable to a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Attack, say go, just ugh. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I think that Kruchkow will sniff out what's going on, and you're vulnerable to other lines of play. I think this is the easy part. Yep. Get in there. Put you down to four. Also, Kruchkow could have Slumgar scorn, too. Yep. I mean, this is a, this well, is a, he's going for broke right here. I'm a little surprised to see Majors just pass. Well, uh, if he, if this works, He's way out in front. Yeah. You're not wrong about that. There's a swamp. That's land number seven. Now it's Jeff's turn to think. What are you up to over there? Well, the good news here for Majors is I've hit, I think if Kruchkow could, if he could counter something like Valor Stance, he would have already seen an attack. Well, he can dig for the answer, though. Because he has dig through time in hand, and he's thinking about casting it. So he will dig. And he's got to dig away the whole graveyard, and part of that is Ugin. So let's take a look at the top seven, Dragon Lord Ochtai among them. Is there a Salumgar Scorn in there is the question. I think that's exactly what he's looking for. Three Dragonlord Ojatai's in there. I mean, this is, this looks like pretty close to a miss. For, for a dig through time that has a dig through time and three Dragonlord Ojatai's, that's currently a miss, yeah. which is a crazy thing to say. Something, Absolutely wild. A, a counter spell here or an other end would be exceptional. And it looks like Kruchkow did not find anything like that. It looks like Kruchkow has made a selection with the dig through time. Though it doesn't appear to be particularly happy about it. And now, He's second-guessing himself a little bit. Horribly awry among the options in there. And another copy of Dig Through Time. And now Jeff can't attack because he is very cognizant of Valor's stance, as he should be. Yep. And so now Majors might be asking himself, okay, what's going on here? You know I have Valor Stance, but now what do you have? The thing is, if, if Kruchkow drew a way to answer Gideon, there's such a high incentive for him to play it straight away so he could attack with Dragonlord Ojitai. Holding back on defense is, is a sign of weakness. Because it's not like Majors has to invest any mana or anything into attacking Gideon. He's just going to untap and do it, most likely. I think an interesting thing that might be on Majors' mind right now is fouling indication, uh, maybe just playing something first mm -hmm. to give you some some safeness around fouling invocation. Yeah, I suppose you could have your token if you just move into combat. Something happens to your token, then fouling invocation mm -hmm. works. Again, Wingmate Rock, Valorous Stance, Whisperwood Elemental in hand here for Majors. His hand's just so oddly chunky. Evolutionary Leap. That'll get a thumbs up. Activate Gideon. Yeah, I think Majors, is the, right now, is suspecting that an attack with Gideon may not be good. Wow. There's Foul Tongue. Majors will sack there.
So what's the creature? Warden of the first tree. W Warden's not a bad hit here. No. I, the, the rest of Major's hand, like, like I said, is pretty chunky. So being able to just put a thing into play, still leave up the mana to use evolutionary leap, should that come up, uh, is not bad. Now, Kruchkow, I believe, should gain four life from the Foutling Invocation. Because he does control a dragon, yeah. of course. So he is at eight. There's Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Jeff tapping a bunch of mana here. What on earth is this? Dig. Okay. Top seven. And he's found Slimgar scorn. Remember, he can't, in the face of evolutionary leave, it's hard to hold it down forever. Yep. But counter spell here is still excellent. Tech. Valorous stance. Absolutely not. There goes Gideon. Major's going to quickly untap and take a draw here. Grishkow making a comeback now. At least it feels that way. Yep. And now, I mean, Ma Major's is going to be just choosing between Whisperwood Elemental and Wingmate Rock after he attacks. Mm-hmm. Jeff's got him in a pretty tough spot. Here's an attack for two. Cruz is going to fall down to six. I like the rock. Raid has been satisfied, so a token on the way. Pass the turn back, leaving up Evolutionary Leap. Yeah, I like Major's making as much effort as possible to leave back Whisperwood. So if Languish is the card, he's, he's good. Here comes Dragon Lord Ochitai, and I, I... I don't like a double block. I feel like too much can go wrong. Maybe that's a little too safe, but he will double block. I'm fine with a double block. I mean... Make him have a spell? He gets to, he gets to anticipate, which is already bad news. This attack could also just represent that he's planning on casting Languish. Let us utter him. Well, I just want to see... I just want to chump. Okay. Like, I don't want to let it through. I just want to chump. There's Dent Protector off Evolutionary Leap Activation. Here's a Jace. One card left in hand for Jeff. Majors will untap and draw. If Majors has land number seven, he could play Dent Protector, unmorph it, get back Valor's no. Tance, kill Dragon Lord's Tie, but I don't think he does. So here's an attack for two. Krush got down to four. You could feel... It's starting to go Jeff's way a little bit here. I, I think this one's coming right down to the wire. You look at Kruchka's graveyard, it, most of his graveyard's been dealt away. Yep. Jace is not flipping and getting back a sweeper next mm -mm. turn. Now, his hand does have Foul Invocation, but is there a way for Major to stop Dragon Lord Ochi from hitting is the question. Well, the way that he can force the hand there is by playing Gideon and zeroing. It doesn't block Dragon Lord Ojitai, but it may cause Kruchka to attack that instead. Okay. I could even see a play that's kind of attractive, and this is going to sound a little crazy, but Gideon and zeroing and then playing maybe Den Protector face up or Warden, and then leaving up mana for Evolutionary Leaf. There's a lot of ways he can go. Yeah. Looks like he's going to go Den Protector. Okay. He's also got the necessary mana to play Warden if he'd like to. I, I think that Majors is pretty much committed to getting back Valorous Stance. If he plays the Warden, that means he loses some value off of Evolutionary Leap down the line in the event that Kruchkov finds removal spells. His hand's forced to get back Valorous Stance, I feel like. That's what he's trying to do. Didn't get a great look at what Jeff drew. Keep in mind, there is a Death Mist Raptor in the graveyard here for Majors. Yep. That's a big deal. Jeff is going to start with Foul Tongue Invocation. I think that just gets the token. Yep. That's, that's all that's going to do. He's 
It's going to gain four life, go up to eight. Jace activation. Not yet. Is he even willing to attack? Has to keep attacking. I think he has Attack to. Attacking is too good in this spot. Yep, there's a hit for five. Trigger Dragon Lord Ojitai. How's he do? Dig through time's not bad. That pulls you in a different direction with Jace, though. Despise over there. Dig is the most powerful card. Yes, but it's uh, it, it sets him further and further away from being able to flip Jace. Yep. The problem I would, I mean, Despise, I guess, is fine in this spot, but it feels like Majors has got enough resources to work with on the board that a one-for-one -one trade's not that attractive. The reason I like Despise in this situation is just because it does, get, it does let you flip Jace. You get to cast Despise, that's card four in the graveyard, activate Jace, flip it, do something. Mm -hmm. And that might be very attractive right now. Again, Dig is the most powerful of the bunch, and it looks like Jeff is considering Despise now, and now he's maybe considering Complete Disregard. He's, he's considering all three cards. The, the issue, I, I think that Kruchkov might have to take Dig here because he's going to lose Dragonlord Ojutai. There's nothing he can do to prevent Valor Sans from coming back. At that point, he's kind of he's got to gas back up, and I don't think he can do that any other way. Here's Jace. Discard Delta. It appears now there are five cards in the graveyard. Hmm, I thought there were only four. I guess one may be off screen. My apologies there at home. Slow that down. Gonna unmorph Den Protector. Get back Death Miss Raptor. Return Valor Stance. All right, time to untap. Majors will draw. Another copy of Evolutionary Leap. Second one's not as good as the first. Gideon is where Majors would like to start. That appears to be in. We're cashing in, maybe. If it resolves. Yeah, I think we were waiting for, to yeah. see if Krushkar gave it the Korean line. Yeah, okay. Yeah, winner of this match. In a very intense game three, and Brian DeMars is waiting with his Atarka red deck. He got the job done. Took down Adam Varner two games to one. What Majors can't forget is that this Den Protector got shrunk mm -hmm. from Jace. So it's not lethal. It's a lot of damage. But it's not lethal. Creatures are going after Jace. Yep. It's lethal for Jace. It's not lethal for Kruchkov's life total. And there's not a lot of argument to, to get Kruchkov down to something like two. Because mm -hmm. if he catches up in this spot, it has to involve a sweeper. So one and, and seven or eight is about the same number. Next question for majors. Do you Valor Stance or do you leave mana up for Evolutionary Leap? I, I feel like the die has kind of been cast. Well, uh, that question just got answered. <laughs> I suppose majors logic at this point is I don't really care if Dragon Lord Ojita is on defense because I can attack with Death Mist Raptor. I can find other things to do. This game's getting mighty interesting. Yeah. There's also the fact that if he leaves Valor Stance up in his hand, he can use it as a way to save a creature. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that can happen there. Now, here's Dig Through Time, which is scary to play against. 
Take a look at the top seven. Another dig is in there, a Jace, a Despise. A Salumgar Scorn has been found. Scorn is attractive for very obvious reasons. That's the first card Krushka is going to take. The others will go to the bottom. Foul Tongue Invocation. Raptors an easy one to sacrifice. Krushka going to gain four. He passes. Well, uh, the way the board shipping up here looks pretty good for Kruchkow. Yeah? Getting into some sort of, uh, of race of resources here, uh, it's a little bit dangerous. The way things stand, you know, Majors kind of has to make a move. Den Protector's going to come across. Keep in, keep in mind, that's a four-power Den Protector. Yep. So Dragon Little Chai wants to block. Well, they would trade, which Majors, I imagine, would be thrilled with. So here's Nissa, that's threatening to flip. Horribly awry. Takes care of that. Warden, pass. Kruchkow quickly untapping. Well, he now has enough mana where he can attack with Dragon Lord Urshai and Slumgar Scorn if he's feeling like it. And be able to find a sweeper. Complete disregard. Power three or less, pump. Ooh. Yeah. And with that emblem in play, that's just yep. a full fizzle. Might have to hold back. No, he's coming in. Well, now the shields are down on Valorous stance. Yep. So if he finds finds one of his sweepers, he can just cast it, and he's found Crux he's found of Found Crux. He's got to cast it. That's going to clear everything away. But now Valorous stance is still available to kill Dragon Lord mm -hmm. Ochitai. And he's found a Nissa to pair with it too. Yeah, this gets pretty good here for Majors. is step one to get that dragon off the table. Looks like it is, so that's gone. Nissa, trigger. Basic forest, he has one. That's land number seven, flipping. Sage Animus on the way. Maybe it brings an elemental token along with it. While still having the mana up here, well, want to get a threat in play and also have the mana up to still use Evolutionary Leap while just getting the token in. Keep in mind that token's a 5-5 five, five now. Majors will pass, nothing else to deploy. Big draw step here for Kruchkow. Keep in mind he's got a Haven of the Spirit Dragon out there. Six mana. Slumgar's not bad. A lot of toughness there. Much more effective blocker than the Ojatai would have been. Yeah. Take it up. How do we do? Den Protector's not bad. Chris Kyle threatening to get back Dragon with Ojatai, too. Mm -hmm. So, as an activation, the, the Slumgar trigger then at that point is. Minus two, minus two, probably does not matter, but worth keeping in mind. Major's gonna go with a morph. Scorn it. Whisperwood's hmm. a pretty darn good follow-up. Manifest, pass. There are big draws available here for Jeff. How's he do? Didn't get a great look at it. And his Slumgar trigger at this point does not, it's not managing the board at all. And he is dead on the way back if he makes an attack. Because mm -hmm. there's three attackers, five power, five power, three power. Can't attack. Just has to pass. Back to Majors. He draws a land. Evolutionary leap in hand as well. We'll see what Nissa yields. Just a planes.
One thing we don't know is whatever that manifest is for Michael. Can't forget about the Gideon emblem that's out there. So manifest right now is a 3-3. Whisper Elemental is a 5-5. And the Elemental token from Nissa is a 5-5. So this is a lethal attack right now. Jeff's reaching. I mean, yeah, he could have gotten back Dragon Lord Otis High and so cast it. Gotta so he's got to have something. Utter end. Sacrifice. To the leap we go. Yikes. Hanger back Walker. This is before blocks. Slumgar's looking to block. All right. Leap again. Death Miss Raptor. Five damage will come through. Jeff's going to fall down to three. Hanging back Walker is attractive right now for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's still somewhat problematic that if there's a second dragon involved, the emblem doesn't matter. But it's still just another threat card. And it's protection against the sweeper as well. Yeah, I mean, at this point, Hanger Back Walker, what major, Majors can just do so much with it, right? He can just play it for, I guess, three and leave mana up to crack it with Evolutionary Leaf on the end step. Yep. And right now, it would be, it would be a 4-4 four, four Hanger Back Walker, and the tokens would be two twos. So he's in a really good position with Hanger Back. I'm not saying it's a perfect card, but it's a darn good one to find right now. Michael has to decide how he wants to go about doing this. Yeah, I guess the issue with Hanger Back Walker here is if Majors plays it, Let's assume Kruchkow goes, end of turn, I'm going to get, I'm going to Haven back, Dragon Lord Ojitai. Okay. Untap, draw something and kill Hanger, Hanger back Walker, play Dragon Lord Ojitai. Now all your tokens are dead. Now all your tokens are dead because there's a second dragon in play. And I have something that can block your elemental next turn. So you lose a lot of footing. It's everyone, it's whenever a dragon oh. control attacks. So if Ojitai oh, doesn't oh, attack, okay. yeah. I thought it was checking for nope. number you control. Okay, then this is very safe. Yeah, then this line of play is great. He'll pass. Ochai's going to come back to the grip here for Jeff. The draw is just an island. Yeah, that's no help here. Slumgar's going to come across. You'll get a trigger there. Looking to take out Nissa. I like this attack well enough from Jeff. He's just trying to demonstrate some amount of strength here. I mean, there's the hope here that you can get Majors to break the hanger back walker to block, and oh. then you have a sweeper, but... He's not biting. Yeah, Majors not going for it. On the end step, Majors is going to sacrifice hanger back walker. Three thopters are going to come out from that. You're also going to get an ev evolutionary leap trigger. Those thopters are going to be 2-2s, thanks to Gideon's emblem. Den protector... Goes to the grip there from Majors. He'll untap and draw. Forest is the draw here for Michael. Michael's trying to figure out. It's what if it's exactly foul tongue invocation? Yep, that's the one thing he's got to worry about. That's the one about. thing. A card like Bioblade doesn't exist anymore. So he can start going down the checklist. What do I have to worry about? Going to play Den Protector pre-combat. And this is smart, too, because he wants to make sure that this happens. If he has Foul Invocation, he has to respond now. Yep. Get back Death Miss Raptors. Get a Gideon. Gideon allow him to make an emblem. He'll cash it in. He'll make another emblem, and that is going to do it. Michael Major is going to win this match over Jeff Kruchkow. Two games to one. Green-White Megamorph will take care of Esper Dragons. And for Michael Majors, he's going to move on to the finals here. Looking to get his second open series win. A very impressive display right there. Yeah, I mean, that was a, that was a hell of a game three. Yeah. Ma Majors played uh, very, very good magic there. I mean, that, that game got kind of complicated to the point where my mentality was more sort of sit back and, and see what's happening here because um, there's a lot to consider on Majors' side of the table. He's been studying the deck list. He 
is familiar with the matchup, and there's just a million different things that he's playing around. Clearly, that Esper Dragon deck has a, a variety of counter spells and removal spells and sweepers and proactive cards and, and card drawing spells and whatever that make managing that sort of game very, very difficult.